Hello everyone and welcome to yet another Bloodlines related video. This time we're going to talk about one of my favorite things and that's music. It's been 15 years since Bloodlines 1 released and one of the most memorable things about it was the soundtrack composed by Rick Schaffa. I remember I was a teenager then, I was 14, 15 and we still used mp3 players back in the days and I would walk through the streets of my small town I was raised in and I would have the soundtrack on my headphones living the dream and feeling like I'm actually cool, like I'm actually in Hollywood right now and I'm a vampire and I'm so dark. <laughs> <laughs> Little dream of a teenage goth. Anyway, it did create a lot of unforgettable memories for me. For example, the first time I was in USA, I've been to Los Angeles and I did walk on Santa Monica Pier, having Santa Monica theme on my headphones and I cried. I was just so emotional. It was beautiful. And because of it all, because how much emotionally I'm connected to this whole music and how many times this soundtrack played in my life when I was going through the hard times and I was just trying my best to somehow get through and try to imagine that hey one day I will maybe go to Santa Monica Pier, I will see it and I will experience it myself and life will be a little bit better. Because of all that I'm very happy to tell you that today we're going to talk about this. And that is the official new release of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines soundtrack, newly remastered by no one else, by Rick Schaffer, who is the original composer for the soundtrack. Now, I actually got an email from Milan Records a while ago, and they asked me whether I want to talk about it, and uh, that they're doing this whole thing, and if I would be excited for it or not, and I was like, yeah. And I do actually have a little history with Rick Schaffer, because I first contacted him back in the days when I was a very small starting streamer, barely anyone watched me, and I really wanted to make an interview with him. And lo and behold, he actually agreed. We met on my Twitch channel, I think it was four years ago, and he came to chat to actually answer our questions and gave us a very good glimpse on how the creation of the soundtrack looked like. And afterwards I remained in touch with him, I actually drew a cover for his book. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of very funny coincidences that happened afterwards and uh, yeah, we remained in touch. I also was very happy to be one of the people that he sent the unpublished songs from Bloodlines 1 soundtrack to. The songs that you might have probably found on YouTube already because a lot of people uploaded them because Rick was really sending them all over the place because he wanted this legacy to continue. He wanted people to listen to these songs and enjoy them. So Rick actually contacted me earlier this year saying that I should have my ears and eyes open for whatever is going to happen in October. And I didn't really know what was going on, but then afterwards I heard about his work on the soundtrack for Bloodlines 2, which got me super excited. And then Milan Records contacted me about this, so yeah. There we have it. This is the official vinyl release of Bloodlines 1 soundtrack. There's also a CD release, there's also a streaming release, so you can listen to the soundtrack on Tidal and Spotify, and probably anywhere else really, it's on YouTube as well. And there's a lot of really great things involved with it, so I will be very happy to tell you a bit more about them in this video. As you can see, I got a signed copy from them. They actually went to Rick Schaffer's house in Los Angeles and got them to sign it for me, so I'm so happy. If you would tell my 40 year old me that this is going to happen one day I would just I would punch you because you're lying it's not going to happen <laughs> Anyway, I did a little unboxing video to show you guys what's inside, because this is very beautiful. The cover is very classic, I think it reminds everyone of the Bloodlines 1 menu. It's very simple, black with the Camarilla Ankh in the middle and the title. Nothing more needed, really. It looks very classy this way. And inside you have the artwork from Sean Lyon, which should shows the cemetery actually and i think it really does a good job of showing the atmosphere of hollywood cemetery and there's also dedication here which is super heartwarming to my wife margaret my children ray and violet and to the incredible fans of vampire the masquerade bloodlines everywhere i think rick knows best about the fandom of bloodlines because he did contact people personally sending these songs in the past and he was in touch with many of us and he was attached to the soundtrack a lot i think the same as we did throughout all these years he actually told me during the interview that we've done in the past that he made the soundtrack when he was in a very bad point of his life and and he channeled all these negative emotions that happened there into making this dark, depressing music. But for some time, Rick actually stopped doing music in general because he just felt like 
Now being happy in life, he just cannot do the same things that he could do when he was down there at the very bottom. And this is how the soundtrack for Blue Lines happened. And it's amazing to know how much personal it was for Rick. And I think it shows. I think it's one of the reasons why the soundtrack was so amazing, because it was very personal. Anyway, on the very back we have something that will please our little filthy trim memes. The ritualistic sigil and there's also the list of the songs. Something worth noting is that these songs were newly remastered by Rick and some of them you might have not heard in the game. There are unpublished songs which was published earlier by Rick sending them to the fans. So if you are a pretty inquisitive fan who googled them then you probably know them already. And also, if you played the unofficial patch of Wesp for Bloodlines 1 with the plus patch, then you actually did hear the additional songs in the game because he added them, but they were not during the vanilla. So if you play the vanilla version, you haven't heard them yet. To add to that, these songs are actually not the only thing you're getting because there's also a download card which is hidden inside these envelopes and I thought I don't have it and I had to look for it because I'm stupid. And when you will download the soundtrack, you will actually notice there are more songs there than on the vinyl. There's, for example, the remix, the aggro mix of the main theme, which is different from the main theme. And it's actually the mix which I've never heard before, so that's something totally new. As for the songs themselves and what you might have heard in the game or what wasn't in the game. World Spirit Map is a song that you can hear in Vesuvius Club, the one that strippers are dancing to in the club of Velvet Valor. But what is in the game is just, I believe, first two minutes of the song. And this song is way longer, it's about 529, I think? Then I actually don't really remember China Boss Battle and Nosferatu Warrens from the game that much. Maybe they were used, but they were quiet or something like that. But I think these two were not used in the game as much as I would love them to, because they are awesome. Edward's theme is a beautiful song with an acoustic guitar, which was originally supposed to be used in the Ocean House. Edward is the guy who murdered the family that haunts the Ocean House, the creepiest part of the game and this song is very dark and ominous. It was actually used in the Vesps patch, so if you play with the patch then you will hear it, but it wasn't there in the original. The Prince's Dream also is something that wasn't used originally, I believe, and the album ends with one of my favorite songs from the whole soundtrack, the unused song. Unfortunately, it is nowhere in the original game. I think Vesp added it somewhere, but in the original game it is not to be found. And the song is called All That Could Ever Be, and it's a beautiful, acoustic, sad, nostalgic song, which I think captures the sadness of being a vampire beautifully. So there are some songs which were published as unused songs for Bloodlines 1, which you cannot find in here. For example, Downtown Unused Theme and Hollywood Unused Theme. And there's a big reason why you can't actually find them here. It's because they are reused as part of the soundtrack for Bloodlines 2. So they are no longer considered a part of the Bloodlines 1 soundtrack. They are right now a part of the second one. One additional thing which is very cool about the release of the soundtrack is that it officially gives us the white list for these songs on YouTube. So as much as initially it was a concern for many of us because uh, when the soundtrack was about to release a lot of people started to get copyright strikes on their Bloodlines Let's Plays. This was only because the songs were added to the Sony database and it automatically created these claims unfortunately. It turned out that it is in Milan's records and in Sony's best interest not to claim these songs. So they are whitelisting them and they won't be claimed in the future and if you are affected by these claims, if your videos are still demonetized because of them. You can just contact them or contact me and I will post a photo for them and everything will be lifted. It happened with my channel as well, it happened with some of my friends' channels and we managed to get everything cleared. So it's finally legal to have these songs on YouTube. It doesn't contain the licensed songs, so no Journey Torturers, no Chasm, no Ministry, you know, all these songs which were in clubs, which were used in the radio of Bloodlines 1. I think the rights all belong to different companies and it will be very hard to bring them all on one record and unfortunately it also means that you may still get demonetized if you play isolated 
on YouTube because it happens to me, it happens to many other people. And yeah, unfortunately, these songs are not on this album, so it wasn't covered. But with that, you get the album of only the songs from Rick Schaffer. So the whole album is made, composed, engineered by Rick Schaffer, and he did actually remix these songs anew. So you could hear. First of all, that the quality is way better. They do sound better. The MP3s, which you can download, they sound better than the ones that you get from the game. And there are some new stuff which you didn't actually hear if you have the game. Bloodlines actually has these MP3 files which are not encoded anyhow. So you can just basically browse the game's folders and you can get the soundtrack from there and you can listen to it. But uh, yeah, the quality is worse and there are less songs than there are here. And also the mixes are shorter. So these songs not all of them, but some of them are actually longer than the ones you heard in the game. The soundtrack is available on Amazon right now in the form of vinyl, in the form of CD or MP3s that you can download. And also you can listen to it on Spotify and Tidal. Basically, however you want to listen to it, you can right now and I'm super happy about it. So yeah, thank you for Milan Records for providing me with these because I'm super happy to have them. And I'm going to probably frame it and put it on my wall because that's where it belongs. <laughs> thank you so much guys for joining me and let's see each other in next Bloodlines related videos. Hey, 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 before you all go get lost in the night, I have a small announcement to make. Rick Schaffer is waiting for your questions. I want to announce the Q&A will be asking Rick about everything involving the soundtrack for Bloodlines 1 and 2 and everything in between. So if you have any questions to Rick, please post them in the comments down below and I will pick the best of them and I will send them to him and we'll be awaiting a reply. How about that? Okay, don't get lost in the night, alright? Goodbye.